recording this computer. Okay, welcome everyone to the first working party meeting on um, looking at the catalyst circle problem, prioritized problems process. Um, so I'm a lot lost for words now. <laughs> um, okay, the, the, so thank you, thank you Nadia and Tiva for coming. I mean, the, the point, the point of these meetings is to um, well, it is to look at the prioritised problems process that Circle has and to see how we can improve it, particularly in relation to um, the Voltaire principles. Um, I mean, in particular, in terms of accessibility, like simplifying the process making the language understandable and making the workflow as efficient as possible. Um, and the suggested agenda today actually is to precede, precede this. Um, so if you could zoom out, uh, TiVo, to, um, to the frame above. And the, yeah, and that's to look, first of all, at the problem sensing process. Um, now, I don't know if anyone from here agrees because before we get to the prioritised problems process, I thought it would be logical to figure out how does a problem get on the board in the first place, okay? And that is called using the language of catalyst circle problem sensing. That's what it's been called so far. Um, now I put some a summary of source materials of where that originally came from, and that was through Governance Alive. And they defined something called problem sensing, which they divided into two questions, like what is the process of identifying and selecting problems from the community? And what is the criteria for a prioritized problem? And this is what hopefully we can do some brainstorming today about. What they came up with uh, was a problem statement rubric, what they called. If you could scroll down a little bit, uh, TiVo, I think there's some, yeah. So, they, they divide that into what problem do you see? Why is solving this problem important to the mission of Project Catalyst? Can you articulate the gap between the current state and the expected or vision state of the problem? Um, what might be the value of solving the problem and how can it be quantified and measured? Now this morning I just quickly looked at that and I put those, those, those um, stickers above it. So I just thought, okay, first of all, you if you could zoom in, back into that, Tiva. Yeah, so first of all, identify the problem, rank it in the catalyst context. Um, then I put question marks, is that a problem statement they're talking about there? And is it a solution statement? Now, rather than go on, maybe I can hand it over to you, Nancy, because the, I'm thinking of what exists at the moment and what exists Back then, there wasn't subcircles. There was just representatives who went back to their communities in quite a ad hoc manner. Let's put it that way. They did problem sensing in different ways. Um, Catalyst Circle Two, would you say TiVo was a similar approach? We kind of didn't have a kind of a structure support for any of the reps, particularly. Um, but now we have these emerging subcircles. Um, and Nadia, Nadia, I mean, working with the CA subcircle, if you scroll over to that, it's on the left hand side, and zoom out and scroll over. Um, I put some links into Nadia's documents there. And you, yeah, so just so it's, it's how this issues log may feed into how, how might an issue from CAs become a prioritized problem? So, I was, yeah, Nadia. Yeah, this is such a timely conversation. I really think there's a great um, time alignment on the thoughts, the thinking here, because we've just come through, for maybe for people who future watches in the future, we've just come through the um, assessment period for fund eight. And this document here that's on the screen is the issues log, which is quite extensive. It's 65 pages, which seems intimidating, but really it's this first page and three, um, table of contents pages. Now, maybe you can pause there for a second because these are things that, for example, like the bolded issues here, um, these are sort of the categorical, what I did through that period was to take through the Telegram channel, Discord, people DMing me, 
telling me things that they would like to have raised and all of our after town halls and open discussions. I compiled this into a, a working document. And then I tried to sort of organize things by what seemed more like umbrellas, which I called issues here. So um, underneath all these little requests here are just people asking questions. Hey, does this exist? Could this exist? And people's answers to it. So the the, the amount of, of documentation that is here is extensive. It wouldn't be something someone would read <laughs> probably start to finish unless you're like really catalyst nerdy. But um, what, what happened is we have this list now of issues of different levels of urgency and importance that are not prioritized in any way other than to have been categorized. And then I tried to put each of those categories in um, a further umbrella, which is, is it related to CA? Is it related to VCA? Is it have to do like audit process? Obviously it's not a CA or VCA initiative specifically, but as everything touches itself in the process, um, you know, these things come up. So that we're now at the stage and we're just having this conversation within the CA, I guess what I would call the subcircle. It's more that we haven't, we haven't formed a subcircle in the same way that some of the other reps have formed a subcircle, but we're now in the conversation where we're saying, okay, these issues have been sensed. How, how can we like take collective feedback on this? And then um, in the way that our group has been thinking about a subcircle, it is more a temporary um, initiative driven uh, collection of people. For example, maybe someone feels particularly um, strong and experienced about taking on spearheading the updates that need to happen for the CA guide, that issue would be um, championed by someone who would then be a member of the subcircle and there would be a subcircle around. So it's a series of circles. So I say that to say the question then becomes when we have this live running list here in real time of, of these issues that have been raised and they could, many of them become prioritized problems. Sorry, that's my cuckoo clock. <laughs> they could. <laughs> Carry on, nothing's happening. Nothing's uh, happening. Yeah. I wonder how many times that is on recording yeah. now anymore. Okay. I'm downstairs, so it doesn't usually happen. Um, so um, how, exactly to this point of this conversation, how, how do these things become priorities? Yeah. Uh, prioritize problems how do they end up on the board and then who champions them yeah. so that they don't just become things that are listed there how do we how do we select that person and how do we have terminology that we can all sort of agree upon because how i think mercy thinks about a subcircle is a group of people who is yeah. there and is supportive for whereas how i think of a subcircle is a group of people who have risen into leadership roles temporarily to solve issues and so maybe there's some space for us to do some definitions here yeah, I mean, can I recap? Point. Recap because it'd be maybe for me to see my. Okay, so the CA subcircle is very um, objective driven. It, it focuses on the work. Yes, and, it, and it, it's it's kind of done a kind of um, problem sensing across. It's distributed that into different um, working groups, if you like, or whatever, what do you call them, where people go off and own a, a particular area and then do a process of discovery on their own to elicit issues, um, which are then fed back into this document or some system where you capture those issues. Then you classify those issues under umbrella classifications to see how they group together. And you've done an additional um, classification to see how they relate to things like CAs or VCAs. Um, so although the nature of the sub-circle might be different, say, to, from other circle reps, there is still, a, what's interesting about the CA sub-circle, it has a, a quite a mature um, discovery of issues in, the, in its community. Okay, that's why it's of interest. But I suppose, I suppose what we're coming up to now is the because some of those issues in, in your subcircle will be resolved as issues, wouldn't they, by the community. And some of, Certainly. Them, some of them are general enough, okay, to become prioritized problems. And that's where it goes back to, if you zoom into the um, uh, Governance of Life stuff, TiVo, that we're just looking at before, the um, problem sensing process, the rubric, actually the problem statement. So we, we keep that in our mind, is that, the beginnings of something that you could use with your community, Nadia. I mean, because because obviously this is like a year ago now, almost July. Well, not a year ago, but you know, it was July last year. 
Um, I mean, you need some way of sieving your issues to determine, and also it's your community, isn't it? Because it's not you, it's gonna be how your community decides what's an, when an issue becomes a prioritized problem. I think, I think these are excellent framing questions because I think that will help keep everyone on track. Yeah. How people solve these problems may be very different. Some groups might have 10 people, some might have two. Um, and some people might have a, a three month issue and for, ideally not, ideally these things are solved in, you know, a month to six weeks. They're not like gigantic initiatives. So, but in any sense, there will be different, there'll be different methods and ways people go about it. And I think that's really healthy, but it would be nice to have these almost like a sort of like a process auditing process, right? So that, yeah. so that we could, so we can think about it that way. Um, I mean, have and, you have you brought yeah. um have you already brought a problem to the board from your community? the only problem that i've brought to the board so far that didn't exist there already from kenrick handed to me was the need for what we called an arbitration process that ended up not being the right term we just needed a resolution process for bcas if bcas were identified in the um in the review process following assessments did if this, anyone was identified as being out, an outlier and how they would go about resolving. Did that come out of that. this process that you just done or did it precede that? Was it no. like, like this, the document you have posted there? I literally finished at like 11.30 PM last night. So okay. it is like brand, it's brand new and it's in review by like our sort of like um, what I would maybe most participatory veteran CAs and VCAs right now, just as a review of the process of opening it up for for feedback from the community and involvement now so it's like hot on the stove so you have this arbitration process problem i'm um, that arose out of some kind of consensus that was out of fund seven fund seven we that issue is noted um it specifically came up in the app we had an, we had a um implementable improvements for vcas in fund eight after town hall that phil k led that was part of that conversation and that I was asked to bring that to the circle to see if circle would serve as maybe an arbitration body. And then would ultimately circle said, make a task force. Then um, that well, I took that back to the group and through discussion, we actually ended up thinking that we could solve it a lot more in a lot more straightforward way, by just having a process and that, that could be built on so that it wasn't too complicated for F8. And so that was implementable. Right. So that was solved. So I'm thinking how something, um, something uh, I kind of realized after my circle <laughs> membership ended is most of these problems feel like they are meant to be written into proposals at some point in order to move them around. But uh, for that example you just provided where an issue came up and some working body or a decision making group, group some, some basically some decisions were need to be made. And for that, you don't need proposals. So I feel like we have two different types of issues we want to kind of govern. Uh, so maybe there should be like explicitly two types of processes for one to coordinate decision making and another to actually prepare problems which will be researched into proposals and taken up on by a community member to actually like publish it or like put it on idea scale yeah. because it would be quite effective if you could like start working on proposals and and if the proposal doesn't get voted well i guess we can talk about it even further. Do we even need it in the practice problems if community doesn't expect it? Yeah, I mean, that's I, kind of... I, yeah, go on, go ahead, yes. No, oh, I, I was going to pick up on that because, I mean, again, that's a moot point because, I mean, oh, well, moot point. Okay, you have problem sensitive, okay, and then you're saying there that, okay, how does that... You, you make it some you make a decision of how that becomes a problem and we, we still need, haven't really resolved that but it becomes a problem then but then is it i suppose what you're saying it, it falls into four camps is it is it a proposal that goes into catalyst proposal system 
why would it be a proposal so it can get legitimacy be voted for be budgeted for be deliverables all that kind of stuff is that has one pathway of legitimacy and engagement and then the other one i think in would just be parameters some kind of parameter whereby so it doesn't it just it becomes a matter of something that the community said this is a problem this can only be resolved by some change that iog has to agree with do you say and i can't think of it they're the only two problems is that any other types i'm missing out here because anything else can be resolved in the community can't it there's another thing I, I think here as well, which is what happens when we, when we, um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to ask this. Maybe we can figure yeah. it out. So if you go to this issues log, right. there is, there are things in this issues log that are not like, if you can go back maybe to like page two, like three or four, I think yeah. there are, yeah. So like, uh, so suggestion for proposal process improvement. Some of these things like updating the proposal guide. Now, um, Danny was like, great, we're excited that, that everyone's gonna work on this and it is a broader community initiative, but it's outside the scope of something that could maybe easily or maybe should go under for, as far as the circle board goes, that doesn't really go under me. So I could I could put that up. So I, I have questions there. Like what is what happens when something is outside the scope of what of me sensing CAVCA issues, but comes up within the community, probably needs broader input or needs IOG input as well. Um, you know, we could loop Harrison, like there, there's ways of approach there, but I think it'd be nice to think about this particular thing too things out of scope of the of the okay. role and right. how to how to start collaboration okay so a broad issue broad issues broad issues that may become problems okay um, um but need um a need uh, input from other circle reps need input from and and harris so we need input from i will say that this kind of discussion or like that topic would fit exactly to the previous one like having this governance or decision making body and and if you don't know what it is then the decision making body should be able to like filter it out or make a decision okay what is happening with this kind of topic mm -hmm. and if it's pushed back then mm, yeah that, I, I, that guess could, I, mean, I mean rather rational than has to be given also I mean, you could write, I mean, I suppose the other feedback that we're getting is like from bullish dumpling and particularly as we're on board new circle reps is to keep it quite as simple as possible and as plain English as possible. So it may not be a matter of writing the whole process for that to you guys. So like, it might be just a matter of, okay, say you have a broader issue, Nadia. So we could say, if you have a broader issue that may become a prioritized problem, but it's not necessarily going to be a CA problem. It's just maybe as simple as going to Slack and talking to your other circle reps and, and, and tagging in Harris and saying, do you think this is a general, a general circle problem, for example? Could it be as simple as that? And then... If yeah, and to that point, I, I do think, and this is, I, I would love to hear what both of you think. I think there's real space and need for just a proposer's rep because I think it is a, a really, that's a gap here I, i'm not someone who likes to add a lot of stuff meetings people whatever on that you know just for the sake of having more and i'm and i think audit's been brought up and things like that as well but um it, that's something that's something that i think is worth consideration maybe at the circle level because proposers a proposer and a funded proposer those are two different groups at least yeah. prior to being funded yeah. and and maybe there's some space for some space for that. And audit, I think, is another thing because when these conversations come up, um, you know, audit voters, audit and proposers, at least they should be agreed that the collective circle focus can address those things. Um, but you know, where, where is the representation for them? And I'm not saying that those are, that's the yeah. solution. I'm just saying it's something to start talking about. It's kind of, it's kind of related to what, it's, it's not what we're talking about here today, but it is related to what we're here today because, because, because there's, mm -hmm. all, there's also that problem of who owns a problem, you know? So, yeah. and 
I know Mercy has had, I mean, uh, well, you and Mercy, actually, um, there was that kind of joint meeting you did. And that kind of filled a gap, really, like who, because um, you were addressing issues um, that, that, that could be related to the funded, <coughs> the pre-funded, the proposal process, you know, so um, just, just a proposal, you know, and it kind of falls into, into the gaps. There. Um, yeah, and it's and it's nice too. It's nice from both sides because the CAs and VCAs have a good amount of experience creating a guide and ushering people through using the guide. And so I think that's very helpful in addressing a proposal guide and and creating expectations around that. But and a lot of CAs are also proposers, but you know you need the funded proposers to also. So I think it can be flanked temporarily from both sides, but it's nice a nice forward thinking thing for those yeah. kind of areas. So. Yeah, okay. Um, Dis distribution and delegation of issues once sensed is maybe a topic that is relevant to this meeting. Like when, when things come up that don't belong to anyone, what's the, you know, is there a way that we address that? But anyway, neither, here, neither um, maybe that's a, like a second meeting kind yeah, of conversation. Yeah, well, hold on, I'll just capture that. Okay, so, um, okay, um, a process, process to decide ownership, essentially, yeah. Yeah. Um, and when it's not clear, and up for a moment, it's not clear. I mean, that, we, yeah. So it's something we need to return to. It. But can we go back to? And I suppose this is. It's just something that's not clear in my mind, and I'm just wondering if we can think about it in a generic sense um, of going back to that problem sensing rubric. Is that sufficient for determining what a problem? Yeah, you know, um, when something comes, when an issue or something comes from the community, it's a now a prioritized problem. Um, because it, it just seems really arbitrary at the moment. <laughs> so, so, I don't know, because it's just a. Can we, can we pick one and try it out? Let's like yeah, run yeah, it through yeah, as an example. Yeah, I, I, sure. Technically, I think it, it is quite fine. Uh, Maybe this quantified or measured statement is might not be even needed because that will come after like, okay, yeah, this is something we want to change. And if it does, then you do the research. Okay, how is the correct way to measure and change it? So it could actually make it shorter. Another thing I was checking into this uh, problem, like what we have in IDSK and here when the expect us to do problem sensing they want us to not presuppose a solution and stating that something in here might be also important i hear what you're saying but problem sensing for proposals is not the same as problem sensing for circle um yeah. I'll, I'll just remind you of that i mean like because the that was defined by governance alive and their sense of problem sensing and the reason why and i could say why there's reasons here like um the reason why there is uh, something about quantification and measurement is so um i think it fits into iog's approach you know so you have you have you identify the problem okay you rank it within project catalyst okay and then it starts it goes into the process and we, we obviously we need to look at the process another day okay it goes through that process and it's like that's when the problem is defined and articulated um so that you you see a, you, there is something to work on you know so that's what they say articulate the gap between the current state and the envisioned state okay so so there's a kind of a to b thing going on here and this is where there's been discussions in circle recently about things that are not really prioritized problems because they don't have an end you know you can't have just issues that you have to have something that has a current state that needs to move to an, an envision state okay and that's yeah okay but then so that's where the quantification and measurement comes in because you have to quantify what your state is and the, then you have another where it's moving to and that's the measurement So I think that's where it all comes from. Whether it's necessary or not is another question. I mean, um, because I, I know there's lots of different views on this. Um, and what do you think, Nadia? Sorry, 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 I sort of went on a bit there. But the, um... Trevor, were you gonna say something 
in response to that? You said you had started something there and then I'll comment. I uh, know I was uh, expecting how it's related to last sticky, but he got covered it. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, I think I think clarity is is like some some things I, I think about it from like the strategic planning process standpoint, like some things are strategies, you have a strategy to do something and then tactics by which you're going to get there. So if we are the quantifying is very like tactical and and quantitative and that's that quantitative maybe not the right word but it's it's like it, provable we should be able to say did we do this yes we did that so maybe we, we can just give like definitions of what that means quantify current state is like because th this i think people will struggle with this and things will so we, we maybe need some like uh bumpers to say this is what it means to have to have quantified something um uh, so, for example, like the CA guide needing updates for Fund 9, you can say something like, I, I might struggle with this too, like 17 different requests have, have arisen and those 17 requests need to be evaluated, reviewed and acted upon either. And the result is that either will negate it as a request that needs to be changed because some other factor is revealed or we're tabling it because some other thing is it's dependent on some other thing that can't be addressed in fund nine, or we implemented it and here's the solution, that kind of a, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Whereas um, in a different example, for example, um, you know, uh, God, I want to pick something. It's not like a hot potato, <laughs> like uh, at the idea scale issues also very, also yeah. very yeah. like, I mean, what, what, so, so there's a lot of things in there that I think could follow this process. And if we can, maybe we give an example or two so that people, they don't just get these questions, but they could see it done on something that yeah. would be, would be um, familiar to them because it's happening right now. If I can just say something, and if you could move on to your idea of taking a, something already and then put, let's imagine we're running it through this process. Um, so I think that'd be a useful exercise, but the, I both put their level of problem too specific or too general. And it just, I put, because it reminded me of something I think Harris said at, at previous meetings where there is the problem of that there is, there's, there are issues and like a lot of issues are too specific and they can be resolved by the community and all that. But then when the issue gets to a certain level, it becomes quantifiable. It becomes, well, we need to decide how that. You know, it, it, there's some criterion where it gets to a certain level and it becomes a prioritised problem. But, but there's also something too general, you know, and I think this has come up before where people have said, like, um, I even one of my problems, like, you know, develop, you know, encourage a listening culture. I mean, that is OK, but it's far too general, you know, because yeah. you can actually have. You, and I think Harris pointed this out. You need to you need to say okay, break that down. So you take that and you say, um, what is the start and end point you're looking for here? You know, so do something that is achievable, you know, rather than a slogan, for example, you know. It's nice also just out of, from a practical standpoint, if someone, something I'm really trying to follow up with, because some of, some of the issues that came up as in every fund, this fund were very personal and heated. And that's a complicated thing to help someone sort through. And so then it becomes, okay, you know, defining this through this process. And then the solution statement is really important. Even if the solution is, I have no idea, here's some things I, I'm thinking, then we can start to get, you, you either get a snowball around the problem, which is sometimes really helpful to, to get specific about it, or you get a real snowballing around the solutions, which need that problem to be really well defined. So um, that sort of like hook question at the end, I think is, is really key so that people are encouraged to bring the same kind of concern thinking to a good solution as they are to the problem sensing itself. Why does it get personal? Is because people get very invested in the issue and take it personally? Is that, is that um, people, yeah, people, have, people interpret, uh, and it happens for all of us, right? We, we interpret something as something specific to us when... Okay. Uh, it may it may be also happening to us. Sometimes things are personal, but sometimes things are happening to us, and we are a specific circumstance that um, 
has has caused this to happen in this in this case, right? Um, and so when we some so that sometimes is the instigator yeah. for us raising an issue. Whereas then you notice it's actually a systemic issue, and it just has been tripped here by something that has happened, which is not personal but feels personal in the moment because there's not a context for how it has how it has happened. And there's a way so of working. There's working way. through that to the root is is really important and i think that this process is really excellent for that so that we can get to actually like okay here everything you're saying and here's all the things and yeah. you can practice that active listening process because it's really important and then we get to this part which is if we can't identify what the problem is and we can't look at it objectively um, as something that we can solve for then a different process maybe is in the works sometimes people do have interpersonal stuff in catalyst and that's okay we can solve that differently but maybe that thing doesn't become necessarily so this process is really important to help work through yeah, things i suppose early not, on in our growth not necessarily objective but something that doesn't have a start and an end point maybe and um yeah i suppose it, I mean, it actually does have to be objective in a sense because i suppose well from this this red rubric because this rubric is asking for quantification and measurement yes okay okay a lot of the stuff we're solving for is system and process stuff here Mostly. Some of it is philosophical and the philosophical can guide those processes. But ultimately, it seems to me at this point that most of from my standpoint, from what I'm looking at, a lot of those things are. I know there are around. some I know there are some circle reps who might want to address. I kind of put it qualitative issues, you know, but yeah. But for the time being, should we focus on quantitative issues? Because <laughs> it's yeah. simpler, because that is really quite complex because it's yeah it may be a different process even okay so we so we pick an, uh, an idea or an issue an idea and then see how we might run with it should we try that i'm pretty close to it maybe one of you guys <laughs> could pick one <laughs> in obje in well, object I think that it's nice to hear someone else's okay. view on it so let's look at the let's look at the table of contents there okay um do you want to do it through the screen share um um, I thought I'm sharing screen. You are. We just do you want to go over to the table of contents part? Oh, so and we'll try we to can, pick a so we try can to go, pick something. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's best if me or Tivo pick something because we're not familiar so familiar with it. Yeah, okay. So what and this will be great for me to see how people digest this too. So what I my initial thinking was that the issues are the umbrellas and they could become prioritized problems. Maybe we'd need reworking or rephrasing. So I, I phrased them here just to sort of give them a easy layperson understanding. Okay. Um, but that might it might need to go through the process here too. Is, is the CA guide something that's already exists? Um, yes. Was, okay. Oh, okay. Even like if you take the first one, so uh, onboarding stuff, and uh, we is a suggestion meant to be something for the circle. And if it is, and if it comes to your table to the side, then currently this proposal output is there are two high level like activities. So because if you if the issue is that we are missing an onboarding document, then the delivery should be just a document and the working group uh, or maybe this is this goes to the alignment part the decision making who who does it yeah i mean for looking if you scroll back to that um first issue on on nadia's document too i mean yeah okay so if you look at the issue one the heading there i mean i mean recruitment is it's suggestions for f9 okay so the the suggestions underneath there seemed things that can already be achieved by the community okay now so i would look at that and i would say there isn't a prioritized problem there okay because a prioritized problem re would require a broader solution i'm not sure if that's completely correct because in the past we've had um for example you know how to change the rewarding system for VCAs or something like that. Okay, you know, and then that that's become that is something specific to a community, but it requires going to circle. Why? Because it requires liaison with IOG. Okay, so these are kind of criteria already, aren't they? Um, 
So if you look at issue one, there's nothing there that requires circle involvement. Maybe that's the question, you know, so maybe what do you think? Let's go down a bit, you know, because I mean, I can okay, but yeah, go on. There's one thing then uh, realizing that this issue one then is something what circle is talking about and the other stuff is the like, research stage. And because right now there is suggestion, so the, that issue one, like there, there's a lack of onboarding or uh, like that, that is now moved. Yeah, but there's a problem with that issue. That's been, again, I think, I'm not sure. I think it's been discussed at recent circle meetings, you might remind me in the 90s, uh, where a lot of these, that's, that's like a general issue, like a lack of onboarding. That's a problem mm -hmm. because it's too general. You know, so and if you started to break it down, um, well, if you break it down too much, it actually gets resolved by the community anyway, doesn't it? And that's what's happening here. You know, so the question is, well, if the, is this if it's already on the board, let's say, because mistakes have been made, okay, maybe we just identified that as an issue of lack of onboarding, okay. Um, why should it be on circle board? Because circle it only needs to be on circle board because circle needs to work on it. So, I mean, yeah, in this case, and I'll just comment on this because I've, I'm so entrenched in what's being talked about in these areas, yeah. is my sense of these is that they are ripe for proposal creation, like create a needs assessment document for CAs. They're the issue that someone is coming up with is um, when someone gets here and becomes a CA, they don't know like you need an idea scale account and then here's how you actually register to do it and here's where you click and here's where you comment and here's this period of time and here's what so it doesn't a needs assessment i think it could become a very either someone could just pick it up and work on it or it could be a proposal the initiative to engage students in the ca role seems also like a, a more of a proposal or a working group kind of a thing um and then a simple CA or BCA test, that one in that case, that is trying to address the fact that the, like one, a bots issue and two, a um, preparation for the role issue. So that one might be actually one where IOG would be involved because it involves both idea scale and a change of the current process. So the third one, I would say, if we really drilled down into those could probably become well, the, um, the, the, the CA, VCA test you're talking about. The, okay. Yeah, this is this was suggested by one of the VCAs to say, you know, uh, it could be something like 25 simple questions someone has to go through. Did you read this? Did you do this? You know, like that kind of a thing. So that so that someone was clearly made aware of the things that need to be accomplished versus having it be suggestive. Like, hey, we suggest you read the guide. <laughs> But if you don't, it really cripples the process later on because we now have lots of things not yeah. being addressed. So, and as you speak, I kind of realized um, that the issue one isn't like a circle issue. Like it's, it, I think it will be very hard to like say no, this is not circle. The, like any problem, I think any problem what is brought could be a circle issue. But it's now for them to decide the priority. And they could say that, yeah, onboarding might not be highest a priority because we worked on this and let's like sit on it three more months. But if something like this pops up, I think one, because it has value if it's better, if it's on board, more like onboarding, there are metrics we could follow. And there is a current state and there is like expected state if somebody brings that lack of onboarding and he goes through this problem sensing and explains what he's expecting, then a circle comes here and has a position, okay. And he, then I see two breakdowns, even for this one problem. One is, yes, you could take a challenge, like makes a challenge proposal and that people uh, put proposals down there, which focus on onboarding. And another part was what just Nadia mentioned and went through like group alignment, okay, maybe a subcircle could do this uh, onboarding document, maybe another subcircle could do the testing document, and maybe one another document, like, because I feel like this circle body is more uh, also like a, how do I say, like Rupert, or like he's, he sees the problem, he tells the problem, he knows the community people who are all swarms, Scottish School, Kima Labs, or 
or like all other groups and you kind of know that yes this kind of information could go to to this group and so it's also a bit of like coordination and and that entire issue could be addressed in like five minutes and then backlog basically yeah i changed that to the, the purple sticky box that i understand what you're coming from tivo so it breaks out into two you say do we need a decision making body to go over that problem and by decision making problem body i assume you mean the way you put it is, is in terms of proposal setting or challenge setting okay so that's using the catalyst process as we find it already yeah i actually the, the, think there is a mistake the top i one. expected yeah, I changed that. I changed the bottom one to parameter change because I wasn't clear because you originally had the bottom proposal. And that's okay, yeah. The yeah. option should be a proposal. So this would be well actually I would um, word it, I would word it I mean, let me explain how I'm understanding where you're coming from. Here. It's you go through the rubric somehow. Okay, maybe we need to finesse the rubric. And what comes out of the rubric are basically two uh routes. Uh one route uses the catalyst process. Okay, which mean, means a proposal or a challenge setting. That's all it means. Yeah, agree. So maybe we should say not a decision making body as using the catalyst process. Why would you use that for legitimacy reasons, et cetera, et cetera, deliverables, all that kind of thing. So we might, for example, in the past, we've talked about, I'm not sure if you've had these sort of conversations, Nadi, where you, you, Circle does a challenge setting which may help with voting for example, like voting on something, you know, or whatever. Um, and that, that that moves forward the problem that there is no voting system to a solution where there's voting systems kind of thing. Okay. Whereas the bottom one can't be resolved by the catalyst um, process, can't be resolved by a proposal or a challenge setting. It involves, and that's why I, I said parameter change, Chivo. So, because, and I mean, it, okay. I mean, I mean that in the broad sense of the word. Like, it doesn't have to be an actual. It just means to be a change in the process. Like, for example, if you wanted to implement the test for VCAs, okay, that would require a change, a parameter change, a change in the process. Um, and then, and then coming out of that, you have a group alignment. The group alignment. I, th I th by that I think you mean. Do you mean the circle group alignment? So the circle needs to be aligned on that? It wasn't quite clear. No. Well, technically, I, I now changed a bit to like the top one um, because I, yeah. for me, the decision making body was like uh, for the group alignment, like making decision in a sense that, uh, uh, that yes, if the parameters need to be changed or group alignment maybe could work better, but basically handing over tasks and deliver those two sub circles oh, or to community. Oh, I've got you. And that's, got you. that's like a decision of like uh, okay. from the circle. Yes, we circle will not do that, but okay, so this, come, this, this, this. Let me see if I understand you. So it goes in do we need a decision making body or do we need a prior to, a parameter? Okay, so, so you have the problem, it's coming in, and then it either requires a parameter to change which in a case then needs to be discussed and agreed and all that kind of stuff. Or it can, it can actually go back to the community then, and the community can resolve it. That's what, that's what you seem to be saying. Because then you're saying, if it's group alignment, we, say, we can say, oh, actually, you know, CA subcircle could deal with this, or, or, or a set of circles could deal with it, a set of subcircles could deal with that. Like, um, for example, the joint meeting between Mercy and Nadia, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah and I, and I do think it's important that we don't we don't that things that things that can be changed and worked on can be changed and worked on like if if it's identified that it doesn't need some like the resolution body was a great example of that we took that through the whole process we got way in on it and we created something that, which if you re regret minimize not having that in place would have been pretty significantly it would it would have been a well i don't know what the right word uh is for it but we we, we needed something like that in place because it was like a legitimate significant gap and it didn't need the level of 
like review, you can put a process in, pra- in place and, and let people work through it without having it be a highly yeah. orchestrated, highly orchestrated thing. So I think that the, the rapid response of, of the community to things that can be addressed by the community um, in real time that don't, that don't make big parameter changes, like you're saying, is important, is important to let happen in the flow of creation so mm-hmm. that we don't yeah. get bottlenecked by issues that really cause more harm by not being addressed than yeah there's also it occurs to me thinking i've already thought of an example there's problems which are they can be resolved by the community but they need a circle to crystallize them like the code of conduct for example mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the code of conduct isn't as well okay let's say for the sake of argument it won't be resolved by a proposal it won't be resolved by a challenge setting and it won't be resolved by a parameter change okay what it will be resolved by is circle addressing it why should circle address it because they represent the whole community and it is a community-wide issue code of conduct we need to say why that is well maybe go back to the rubric but then it's going to be it's going to be addressed by subservice, isn't it? So, you know, you again that might follow your kind of breakdown of how you work. I and mean, the circle should just say, okay, we don't have a code. What's the problem? We don't have a code of conduct, or we don't have an adequate code of conduct. That's the current state, or it isn't doesn't accommodate everything. Like, for example, circles relationship with proposals, or you know how someone should behave, or whatever. You know. And we want we have an ambition state, okay, and how we get there. But how we get there may be resolved by the um, circle reps going back to the community, you know, so Mm -hmm. by the sub circles, by community groups, by working parties, and all that kind of thing, like you do in CA circle. And then once they've done the work, you then say, okay, we've done the work, you've reached that endpoint, and then you take the code of conduct problem back to the solution, don't you? Is that how? Tiva, do you think that's is that what you're thinking? That kind of thing. Yep, I think you can give a good overview going through this again. And maybe if we just quickly take the next issue and see if we can do the same thing, kind of have, have the same logic for it, or, or yep. maybe yeah, go. CA guides needs updating for span day nine. It kind of falls down to the same thing as an onboarding. I guess it's because there was so many requests. I guess that's why it was categorized as a second issue. The only thing I would stop, I would stop there though, because and again, maybe this is the problem of being too close to it now, because <laughs> a lot of those issues are about functional, like yes. okay, the, the CA gate guide needs updating. Let's all get to work on it. Okay. What it doesn't address is who's going to see it, you know, how are you going to promote it, who's going to access it, is it in plain English? <laughs> what are people outside the CA community going to think of it? How they're going to find it? <laughs> yeah, do you yeah, have those? So do, I, do you have that anywhere? <laughs> I think I think that's a I think that's a separate issue to this one. Right. So if I were to define this issue, I would say. Um, and that's not really a problem statement, right? CA guide needs updating for fund nine and people would say then why? So it's not well-defined, but I think that, I think the issue here is. Um, oh, I think it can be well got because the, the CA guide, okay, let's say for sake of argument, the existing CA guide is out of date. And, and that's another great. thing. The, CA, the existing CA guide does not provide sufficient detail on X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay. And that's, and then you want to get from there to a solution. So once it, once it is updated, then I think then the next issue is um, a CA guide, like the accessibility of the CA guide could be much improved kind of a thing. Not access, accessibility is maybe not the right word. Um, the, the reach of the reach and utilization of the CA guide needs improvement kind of a thing. So how are we distributing it? How are people reviewing it? How is it being received? Um, then, then you get into these other, then you get into these other yeah. questions. And I, I, do, I do want to get into a situation where uh, I'm raising issues. So if, if the issue is not there, you know, <laughs> I don't want to create more work for you than is needed. But I, yeah. I would like to, I would like to represent your issue, Stephen, by putting it on, <laughs> by putting it on, on the board here. 
yeah. I do like the issue because most of that stuff would fall under and go to like group alignment basically yeah. and back to the community hey refine to better but I fit it fine capture for preventing bots which is not really related to guide because that would be something for idea scale um, yeah I mean presumably that's what, a great point yeah what, ha what happens there do you move it to another issue um, probably okay. yeah probably Okay. And I'm I'm hoping people will catch my catch things where I've put something someplace where it could be better some other place. So that's that I hope that's a natural part of this process of people looking at it. No, it's great. But, but it, even even this this kind of brings now a question: What happens if this kind of issue does come up in circle? Because if I mean, Harris will maybe knows, oh yeah, Mark, no, Mark can do it, but that he will take it outside, and then we realize and come back to the like, hey, idea scale. We cannot do that in six months. And well, skip to probably like skip to idea scale. So I would say uh, on page like maybe two or three here of this table of contents, meaning the next page or the next page after this of the table of contents, there's a, <laughs> there's a delightful little selection on uh, idea scale. Okay. So, yeah. so idea scale prevents ease of use in all stages. Yeah, go back one there. Yeah, yeah that is a problem. That is a problem, definitely. So that's because, a legitimate problem. And then maybe the capture bot should, um, request should go under here. So that's like, let's just assume that we've moved that somewhere else and it doesn't belong where it is. Um, <laughs> this document's so huge. Okay. So, yeah. So then, then, then now you can look at the idea. Then I think what you do is you bring this up, you look at all these different, you look at these different requests and issues, and then they get evaluated. And IOG definitely needs to be involved in that because we have things for, some of these things are just like wish list. Some things are genuine glitch issues that are causing major issues, and some of the things are um, right. Yeah, probably in other categories. Okay, let's let's take okay, let's take a general issue. Well, it, it is general enough to be a prioritized problem, and also requires IOG's involvement to resolve it. The improvements to idea scale. Yeah. There's a couple of issues, boom, boom, with that. It's, it's first of all, there is, is that a CA issue? That's the other thing. And um, I suppose that you can boil it down to, let's say the you, out of all, here you go. Yeah, okay, right, right you got it up. So if you look at all these requests, you would identify, would you identify a set of them which you see as vitally important, perhaps? And you would say that is, these are the requests that we want IOG to change. And then and the only way to do that is for a prioritized problem. Why? Because it needs to go to circle. So circle can liaise with I with IOG and talk about it as a community because it's also any any change to idea scale will affect everyone. It will affect the voters and the reps and everything. So that's that's an obvious reason there. And yeah. also also, then you will have an obvious start point and end point with this because the start point will be as it is and the end point will be the change, obviously. Um, so it's not that it would work quite, I mean, the, only, the detail is up to you, Leonardo. For example, you would, before you bring that to circle, presumably, I mean, maybe, maybe there's a refinement process you can do later on you would have identified what the community want to change you know yeah and that's where back to our sub circle discussion my sense would be that someone like phil or like victor or someone who uh is and maybe mark as well to be just have their eyes on what actually is feasible it would probably have gone through like a little bit of an evaluation because if some of these things are requested and they're not actually doable then um you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't put that, or maybe you would. It's not, anyway, would, at some point. But at, at least you would notify others that, hey, yeah, yeah, an you, issue. You, that's I a mean, great point. That's a great point. I mean, you, so you, I think, I yeah, think sure. a sub circle champion would arise out of this, who is not me, who would be like the community champion of this issue. And maybe there would be five to 10 people who are all involved in it. Some of those people, maybe the people who raise the issues, which is a great opportunity for community engagement and participation especially by new members of catalyst and then that group would 
sort of be the working group on it. And then I, in this, in the rep function would bring this as a prioritized problem. So, okay. see it so, you have, so the way it would work for you, you have a champion who's dealing with it. And when you, it become, you've all decided it for it to be a problem, your community. So you're the rep, you put it on the board in the problem backlog as it is at the moment, it might change that in the future, who knows. And then, and then, and then at the first circle meeting, you say, we have this new problem. Uh, I have this person or this group is working on it. And then it goes, starts going through the prioritized problem process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it also, and then this is just a process question. It would be nice to have, like, we talked about this before too, uh, like one specific to CAs that don't maybe reach that circle point because the archiving uh, GitHub space, because some of these things won't belong on the circle board because they won't fit this criteria, but it's still nice to say like, here's how, here's how this was arrived at. Here's why this change was made. Here are the, here's the log of the changes and iterations of the guides over. Is, isn't Scott doing that with the D work stuff though? We could, we could use that there. I, I would like to have it mirror the same. We should have the same process across, across everything. So the, the discord server and um, D work will populate, uh, will populate GitHub. So yeah. I think, I think that I would love there to be perfect alignment as much as possible of the process so that people start to get used to, and we can have multiple um, ways to look at how, how this is actively working as people are using it from a community perspective and um, the same principles for the framework. Yeah, as a foot, as a footnote, I noticed you were using D work, and I looked at this. I, I installed it on um, a test QA DAO server, cool. Uh, and did, so I'm playing around with it with as well, but just with a couple of people, me and someone else. So it doesn't um, to, to see how that it will. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to follow that because I mean, like, the main I know it's your it's your system. So what I'm watching you is. I mean, hopefully you're successful with Scott and everything is how it's whether people will, will use it, I suppose. <laughs> that's, yeah, our, that's, that's our, group, our group particularly uh, is so is so comfortable with Discord and is, uses Discord so much. And those who don't sort of migrate over at the times it's necessary. Yeah. So I think the communications benefit there for those really rich conversations is is very valuable. And there's a whole there's a whole communications group there on it. It's yeah. like Scott really has done the build, but um, but, but, as far but, as... but that's great if you can get a GitHub because it, it, it publishes a GitHub issue to a Discord thread, doesn't it? And then you can discuss it. So yeah, I then, think I think yeah. for that it yeah. will be it will be a big step up to solve that communications piece because um, right now this there is absolutely it, the hours of sensing and putting these things into documents could be solved by having that actually populate itself rather than me like dragging it from everywhere and doing this document which yeah. um without someone ushering that forward is doesn't doesn't chronicle what's happened there and it certainly makes it like i've sent this around to our to our um to our VCA, CA, VCA groups a little bit just to get, and everyone's like yeah. 65 pages. You know, it's just such a, it's such a massive thing to, to I mean, It's interesting. Yeah, I just want to get too specific because the, um, we're talking about audit trials here, aren't we? Because so, so yeah, this, you, the CA sub circle is, ha is now developing its own audit trial system, your civil issues, an issue management system really, isn't it? And yeah. that is great. That is great. But, not all sub circles will do it that way totally so we need we need to bear that in mind by the time it gets to circle and i'm on the bomb i'm with others and, and circle admin i'm developing the issue management system behind circle and that's all based on github and the project board um so it's the same sort of system funny enough as you're using in c in in ca group um but that's flexible enough just to go to any change in board status and that's when we would get on to for our next meeting maybe on the prioritized problems board itself which we haven't talked about today but on how they move through from one yeah, thing to the yeah, next that yeah. was very that was very helpful that clarification on they should only move moved in the meeting <laughs> i know i've kind of uh, yeah uh, and well th there's lots of we need to discuss around that because um i mean i'm just conscious that we're a 
up to the hour on the meeting, so I'm not sure how. I've got a meeting at uh, in half an hour, yeah. but I can stay on for a bit longer if you want. I don't know how you you are, Tivo or Nadia. I got time, and I got also got question. Go on. Yeah. Uh, for now, when we kind of realize, okay, we have a problem, we know how to set it up, and we kind of do a decision. Basically, if it's a proposal, challenge setting, or something. Uh, okay, broader as the coast decision making, then it would go to this uh, prioritized problem part, I guess, because it would, it would, yeah, because it would be easier to track, easier to complete. Yep. Uh, and but is all the group how do we decide is the parameter changes? I guess that could go also to prioritize stuff, but yeah. for working stuff, is all of this going to community issues or they are also part of the circle? Community issues again is a separate subject, it's not really related to what we're doing here today. It's kind of it's something we need to address because it was just. I'll give you some background. I think I explained it. I think I've explained it to you now, I'm not sure. But it, 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 all it is, is in January, when we we're on Circle, do you remember we had uh, some of the community asking Circle, how can I put an issue on the board? Okay. And there isn't, there wasn't a way to do that. And like people like Mark Stopko, you see a lot of issues there by Mark Stopko, for example. So I created a separate board. It's not a separate, it's a separate label called community issue which allows anyone in the community to raise a community issue just so that and that's it there's no process or anything so i just said that it's just to allow anyone it's like a stopgap tivo so there's no it's something we probably need to return to actually because that question is still hanging there um and i'm not i don't have an answer for that i mean i'd be interested to hear what you do yeah think. but even like it's funny because it's like extension to vote collection period. I think Circle wants to be involved to know how our vote collection period changes or there is like process for Circle member removal. I think yeah. Circle member wants to kind of have it on their board, but I guess they will keep it in backlog because... I suppose this is it. a bit like Nadia's um, um, issue system, but it's for everyone. <laughs> It's for, you know anyone can come yeah. along to this and post an issue you know so i think i think here terminology is very helpful so to, you described issue versus prioritized problem with us last time when we had the meeting with joey and so i named all of these issues because we should be we should start to have some like maybe definitions around terminology that help the community know where something is in a process just by how it's being described so some of these issues could become prioritized problems here and um, that's the other thing, thinking about the, the Discord and the, and the D work is it, it gives people a place similar to this where they, it, within the conversation that they're having, can escalate things to become an issue rather than just something that's being thought about. And then either the rep, in my case, for that particular circumstance, or the circle here in this circumstance of these community issues, it is on the circle then to look at these and say, okay, now I at least have to have a conversation with this person. What's the expectation? Um, the expectation is I would process this person's issue that they have raised and think about what the next steps are for it. And then it would enter. Um, and it got so important this part, because if you're listening, you might be like, I totally disagree with this on a personal level, but from a process level, it should go into the funnel of this is how this is thought about and this is where it will end up accordingly so that um there can be real transparency about the process and so that everything can have a everything can have its fair um sort of um run at being adopted as a prioritized problem or going somewhere else where that person can have their issue addressed um, yeah. more Maybe. appropriately Maybe we need to go back over all this and be clear in the language, as you say. I mean, it's like what you said at the top. I've said, if you scroll up there a little bit, Tivo, to um, yeah, broader issues that may become problems. Okay, so you start with things called issues, and some of those issues may become a problem in itself. Yeah, and then but then collections of issues may become, or it may be collections of issues will become a problem. You know, like for example the. There's a collection of issues about idea scale that becomes the prioritized problem about um, making changes to idea scale. Yeah. Um, so, 
No, as a, yeah. Did you do? You, do you see any problems with your community in communicating that? Like, um, it's we're we're so new. The D work is like literally Scott and I are sort of in the same rhythm as far as I just finished this document and and the idea for just like making D work very simple and just testing it out. Um, is like starting now. So it's not actively in use. This is the process that we've used so far up to right now is people are contributing issues all through. And we did one upgrade this fund, which is that we put them all in one place rather than have them be kind of everywhere. So I think the next stage is now to start putting, putting the food into the process mm. and letting it letting it um, work. So it would be nice if from the beginning here of doing that, we use we use agreed upon terminology so that issue for issue in this group means the same thing as issue in this group. And um, most certainly everyone, like I, I think, you know, Mercy might use a completely different communications approach, but we should use the same terminology so that that's consistent. Yeah, I think you might, yeah, you might have to discuss that because I know, I mean, it frustrates me sometimes that <laughs> The funding proposers subcircle sometimes use the use the term like to use the term problem, <laughs> and I keep saying they're not problems, they're issues. But they're, <laughs> but they're, but but you know, people, yeah, exactly. For, for for me, I mean, obviously, you just have to qualify that and say you can say prioritize problem or. I mean, the issue I have with the issue boom, boom, the, with prioritize problem is that again, when we get on to discussing the prioritize problem at a later meeting is this issue of language, um, which I'm very cognizant of because like, for example, what Bullish Dumpling and Joe were saying um, to their communities, like, what does all this mean to the, you know, the average person, you know? And mm -hmm. um, I know within your sub circle, you have your own culture and your own level of understanding of terminology, don't you, in CA subcircle? So, what you know, what what you say in CA subcircle won't necessarily be instantly recognisable by the general community, will it? <laughs> you know. Well, it's also emerging there too. We're we're just we're talking about it, like, and then it's an initiative, and you know, it's, so that's a lot of what those slides are that you have next to the next to mm. the document. Is we're 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 making a run within ourselves of what's a, cha a champion is very adoptable. It's much, it's much easier than leader because leader has its own package of things that people perceive. A champion is like, I'm gonna take a temporary, I'm taking this on for a strategic need. I'm gonna, once I've championed it, it's been championed that I'm no longer the champion until I'm the champion again, kind of a thing. The D work so, uses, uses the term steward, doesn't it? Steward, yeah. yeah. So that and that has its own, you know, when you have things that are sort of native to it, that tool. Now you have this whole test. So now we have to either say a steward, a steward might be. So we're thinking of steward a little bit in D work. A steward is more like we have an umbrella of CA issues. We have an umbrella of VCA issues. You might have a steward of CA, CA issues. Underneath the CA issues is the champion is leading the the issue which becomes a prioritized problem of um, the guide needing updates. So the guide needing an update is a prioritized problem under the CA VCA umbrella and the CA and that person who looks down at all of those things or looks across all of those things and sees them happening is the steward. And maybe the steward says, okay guys, here's the here's do you champion, does your group have a clearly defined problem have you gone through the process that is that we've been talking about here this morning and helps that to sort of happen almost like a challenge team kind of kind of a role but these are all just you know this is why defining terms is really important because if you don't do that yeah then, i mean the equivalent in you know, circle, no one knows who they are what they're doing the equivalent in circle is owner isn't it so you're the for example you're the owner I can't yes, remember exactly. You're, you're the owner of the problem on the board for this meeting, which is a kind of a weird one because it's a joint between oversight and circle. So this, what we're doing now is on Catter's circle problem board as a camera what's called improving the process or something, isn't it? And you're, you've been, you've been assigned ownership of that and mm -hmm. working with oversight now, but you don't necessarily 
you're kind of a steward, aren't you, Nadia, then for this? Because yeah. you, you will call on call on your subcircle to do some work about this, presumably. You know, you will draw on that work, like you're drawing on the the issue, the issue list in that document. You, know, you didn't do that document completely yourself. A lot of people in the community came in, fed into that document, and all that kind of stuff. That's right. Okay. I'm just, the, I'm just the, or I'm, I was like the organizer of the data. That was it. Yeah. And, the, but these are not issues that I myself has raised. So when I put it back out, my expectation is some people are going to be extremely excited about certain things. And those things may or may not be as urgent as other things in terms of impact. So then it is, do, do how, do, how do we make sure that the, the fire, if there's fi things on fire, we need to put them out. And also it'd be nice to plant a garden over here, right? But you can't plant the garden and not put out the fire. So we have to really sort of address, address what those things are. And then someone who's really excited to plant a garden may not be interested at all in trying to put the fire out. So you have to have people be able to work on the things that are important to them where there's motivation and momentum, but also not let those things go that, that are really um, important to, to be addressed. So. This is going to be like an experiment that requires a little bit of like usher to, ushering and stewarding to say, okay, uh, no one's come up to address this issue yet. And then maybe in the interim, it's me if I'm the, if I'm yeah. the rep of, of that. And that's okay in the absence of someone who wants to do it. But ultimately, the community needs to work on it and it needs to go through the same process regardless of whether there's someone really excited about it happening. Any thoughts, Timo? Are you going <laughs> well, not specifically. I, I was just thinking that um, I think what you're talking about now is very important because um, it also relates to something I didn't really think of for this whole process, process is like what is the scope of your role, like the rep's role, you know, mm -hmm. because um, it kind of helps define how a problem comes to you. Like, for example, if like, so the prioritized problem. We've got a, we've got the rubric. It's actually not in the rubric either, Tivo. So part of the rubric should be saying it's not just the rubric. You're past the the issue or before it becomes a problem. Let's say it's an issue before it becomes a problem. It has to meet all the criteria of the rubric, and then it has to be owned by someone on circle. Mm. And that's the steward. That's the champion. That's the equivalent of all that on circle. And but also how you define that, like. Um, also feeds into how you define the process because circle well I've, there's been some confusion over this in the past few circles but circle reps shouldn't really be doing the work of the problem they should be stewarding the problem mm -hmm. that, uh, not uh, broadly and there, there might be some exceptions to this but broadly so yeah um it's a, it's a really important piece. I think it happens. I think it happens naturally when the expectations for the rep are very clear. So I think that my approach to this is I'm here to listen to people, to help organize thoughts around things that are happening, and then to help facilitate action on them or to raise flags if it's not something that I can actually address. And with that in mind, I think the process works really well. It's a different thing if someone were in this role and were wanting to like, you know, if they had, if they had their own sort of initiative in mind um, coming in or their own um, uh, priorities, that's a, that's a, that, that really changes the process. So these, these particular things in place is very important so that that at least would be I think it's important to prevent that because you really could have someone come in and sort of design things based on their own idea. And that's not what the purpose is of this person. I think, that's so, a, yeah, I mean, it's a continuous problem, isn't it? Where, and to be fair, it's, it's, it's kind of, I mean, again, it's non, it's interesting from a circle onboarding perspective, because again, it's about, you know, like what we say to people who want to be circle representatives in the future. You know, so like what your job is, <laughs> you know, and yeah. there's obviously, you know, sometimes, you know, your job is not to arbitrarily move issues across the board at your own web. Your job is not to just represent your own point of view. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. 
that kind of thing you know so that that kind of feeds into onboarding and uh, also to also code of conduct and also how a circle member well yeah how a circle member should behave i suppose which is a bit yeah that you know so that's related to the problem process um the listening thing that you mentioned as well is very important you know it's like and you know even with the best will in the world it, it is it is difficult and challenging to listen to opposing views for example you know so certainly yeah um, well that's where that's where having this having a clear way of asking the questions is really, really important because a good a good series of a good series of um defining or clarifying questions takes you out of the mix entirely you don't need to have first of all probably you shouldn't have an opinion in a lot i don't know if should is the right word but it's more complicated when you have a strong opinion it to is not let that not let that and we all do we all have our own biases and so that's something to take into account but when you have a really good clear like clarifying process and questions that can be asked and outcomes that you're looking for that are tied to that I think that will solve for a lot of the the gaps in having those things in place so far and the potential for opinions to overshadow. Let's wind down um, the recording yeah. and stop the recording now. Uh, I've got to get the 